We have some data here, says the manager of the commercial mortgage department of a large bank has collected data during the past two years concerning the number of commercial mortgages approved per week. Okay, so in other words, um, none, 11 were not approved, 28, one approved, and so on. And it says the results from these two years, 104 weeks, are shown. All right, so what we want to do is we want to come up with a probability distribution and then be able to answer questions based off of it. So to be able to get a probability distribution is I need each one of these probabilities. Well, how you do that, and we already know it was given to us was 104, but let's just put that here. So I'm going to sum this column. And by summing this column, I get the total, 104, because I'm going to need this to find each probability for what's the probability none get approved, what's the probability one got approved, and so on. So to do that, I do equals the part, so in this case, that frequency divided by the whole I'm going to copy this formula, so I'm going to put dollar signs, and I pressed F4 on my keyboard, um, put dollar signs around this cell, because what that does is that says when I copy this straight down, the frequency will move, but the 104 will stay the same. So I press Enter, and so basically that tells me the probability that there were none approved is about 11%, right? So if you move the decimal two places over and you round up, about 11%. Now I'm going to copy the formula straight down. So you could double click on these and see what they're doing. The next one, 28 divided by 104. The next one, 30 divided by 104. But this is why you want to use Excel, see how much faster it is. Now what you should do to check to make sure you didn't make any mistakes is to sum this column, because if you did it correctly, it should add to what? 1, right? Because that'd be 100%. So if it doesn't add to 1, then you may have referenced something wrong. All right, so I have my probabilities now. So now I could actually find the mean. Sometimes this is when probability distributions, this is called expected value. You might see it as um, mu. Okay, or I guess I could have even put X bar, but how you find this is you take each X value and multiply it times the probability. Okay, so each X value, which is this column, and multiply it times the probability. So this is going to be X times the probability of X. So I do an equal, click on that cell, and then times the probability. And so what this says to do is do this for every one of them. So I'm going to copy this formula straight down. Of course, zero time anything, zero. I copy this down. And once again, I could double click on a couple of these and make sure they're doing what I thought they were going to do. And from here, if I sum this column, because that's what that big old E means, is to sum. If I sum that column, that is my mean. So I would expect about two of these mortgages um, to be approved per week. Okay, so now the next part says the standard deviation is X, so each X, minus the mean, which I found, because that's going to give me the spread, then I square it times my probability. All right, so that's going to be this piece here. So I'm just going to say x minus mu squared times my probability. All right, so let's do it. So equals, open a parentheses. I'm going to make it look like this. x minus my mean. Think about this. I want to copy this, so I'm going to want to make sure I... Uh oh, I pressed the wrong button. Make sure I absolute reference the mean. And you can type the dollar signs. It's some keyboards, the F4, you either have to do a function F4 or a control F4. I'm, I'm just pressing F4, but you can type the dollar signs. 
squared, so that's shift six and then two, and then times my probability. Okay, so my x value minus my mean, because remember that's what the standard deviation is, it's the spread, how far away you are from the mean, square it, and then times the probability. Now from here it says do this for all of them. That's the sum. So I take this, I drag it straight down, and I sum, so do a sum of all of these. And what this actually gives me is the variance. Remember the standard deviation, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So all you have to do is equal square root that value and that will give you the standard deviation. That's the big square root symbol right there. So that would be the spread of our data, which we would say, you know, about 1.48 um, is the spread of the number of mortgages that are getting approved. Okay, so now let's say we want to answer some particular questions like, you know, what if I just asked you flat out, what is the probability exactly three were approved? Well, that's simply be this number right here. That's my probability, right? So I'm just going to copy it equals that value. So exactly three. Now what if it said, what's the probability less than three? Well, less than three would mean two, one, and zero. Okay, you wouldn't use three because three is not less than three. So what I would do is I would sum the probabilities for 0, 1, and 2, and that would give me my less than 3. All right, what about if it said the probability between 3 and 5? Okay, notice I put the equal sign because I want 3 and I want 5. So the probability between 3 and 5, then, would be the probabilities 3, 4, 5. 